Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. I get a lot of viewer mail that asks us how we prepare our rodents to feed all of these snakes and even ask us what our take is on the live versus frozen controversy. That's what we're going to cover. You're watching Snake Bites. here in the rat room. You know, we breed rats to feed to snakes once in a while, but it doesn't have to be that way. Like me, I like to sneak back here, find me a couple pets, love them. Let me show you a couple. Here, you'll remember her, Crook Snack Jr. And now, little Crook Necks. See, they don't all have to be food. They can be friends of Chewy. All right, Trav and George here back in the rodent area. Um, I breed and I clean the rodents, and we use these freedom breeder racks, and on the rats, I like to do one male to five females, and then on the mice, I like to do one male to six females, and it works out pretty good for us. Hey, what's up, it's George again. I feed and water the rodents. Every couple of days, I water rodents, check on the waters, make sure they have waters, and then every couple of weeks, I pull out these big ass racks, squirk out every couple weeks. I dread that, but it's fun. I love the rodents. Pretty cool. All right, now I'm going to show you some of my, what I like to call my cuter rats that I work on back here. Um, you guys might not like them, but I do. And this guy from the Halloween special, he's gotten so big and look how cute he is. Those are my babies right there. What I feed my snakes here is frozen mice. We get bags of 50 mice per bag. Um, what we do to throw out is a pretty good way. You take a bucket, you throw the mice in, throw uh, hot water in it, and wait about two to three hours, and they would be thawed out. Hey guys, get this is wild. In the back, usually what I do for feeding it back here is I just go in the freezer and get some rodents and some rabbits, and I do what? Just I'll leave them overnight. Set them up in a, in a bucket over here for a tub. Leave those overnight and when they thaw out then I feed them the next morning. If they're not all the way thawed out, I warm them up with warm water and you're good to go. Probably one of the most controversial things about our business is feeding live rodents. And here on Snake Bites, we typically don't like to feed live rodents because we don't want you guys to get the impression that we enjoy it. I tell you, we are animal lovers and we don't want to feed live if we don't have to. Not to mention, it is really better for a snake to feed on frozen if it can because there's less damage potential to the snake. That being said, there are snakes that only will feed on live. And that means that you have to do it in the most humane way. We don't enjoy it, but it is something we have to do and you know I thought long and hard if I was going to include this segment into this show but the truth is live food is part of keeping snakes so we're going to go ahead and feed the way you should feed a live rodent on. Underline trains and it left us string holding behind Hey, this is Snake Science with Dr. Chewy. Today we're going to talk about the difference between feeding live and frozen. I'm going to check my frozen rodent supply. Professor Passion, how is the frozen rodents? So, Dr. Chewy. No, Professor Passion, how's my rodent supply? Looks good in here. So, Dr. Chewy. <laughs> Professor Passion, how's my rodent supply? Looks good in here. So, Dr. Chewy, is there any nutritional difference in feeding? 
So, Dr. Chewy, is there any nutritional difference between feeding live and frozen rodents? Well, Professor Passion, there's been many studies about fresh meat over frozen meat and the nutritional values of both. There's such a slight loss in nutrition over frozen versus live that... <laughs> there's such a slight loss of nutrition in frozen versus live as long as a rodent is less than one year in the freezer. Well, what happens after one year in the freezer? Well, Professor Passion, after several months laying in the freezer, the fat will break down and the rodent will lose its nutritional value. Well, what is the advantage of feeding frozen over live? Well, snakes that feed on frozen are less likely to get injured during the feeding process. But some snakes will only feed on live. You know, it's better to have them eat live than to have them not eat at all. This has been Snake Science with Dr. Chewy and Professor Passion. All right, Bri, what is this product you've been talking about you're so excited about? Something for the crickets that makes the lizards healthier too? Yeah. Timberline has a product that's called Cricket Power Food. It actually makes the crickets healthier, which in turn makes your lizards healthier. That's real exciting. All right, so where is it? Let me see. Let me I talk thought, about it for the lab. I thought it was right here. You know, Chewy had, he was supposed to bring it up. Oh, let's go talk to Chewy. Go. Hey, Chewy, what's up, man? Mm -hmm. What the f are you doing? I love the new power food from Timberline. Thumbs up. Timberline Cricket Power Food is not for human consumption. For more information, visit TimberlineFisheries.com. Snake myths, fact or fiction? Yo, bro, I heard that like garter snakes are somewhat venomous, or like people have allergic reactions to them when they bite. Is that true? You know, venom is just a specialized form of saliva, and there's certain snakes that people have some kind of an allergic reaction or adverse effect to. Hognose are one, and garter snakes have been known to kind of be another one. I haven't personally seen anyone have it, but what I think we need to do is take two subjects, have them both get bit, and see if there's any kind of reaction. So, what do you think we can use to test this? Chewies for sure, you know. I'm gonna go with George and Newbie. That's it. Chewy and George. Let's do it. So Brad, what the hell happened? Well, fortunately, we were able to find a couple garter snakes that were really willing to go ahead and chew on them, bite them the whole shot. It was a perfect experiment. After two hours of monitoring, we didn't even see the slightest bit of swelling. I'm not saying that it can happen, but in this case, we didn't see anything at all. So everybody wants to know, Brad, is it fact or fiction? You know what, I'm gonna go doubtful on this one. Doubtful. There you go, that's a new one. Doubtful. Doubtful! All right, guys, it's Cal's question of the week. Now, this can be kind of a controversial topic. Um, I want to know what your view is on feeding live as opposed to frozen. I want to know what you think of it um, and what you guys do personally. So let me know. Text or video comment below. So there it is, our techniques for preparing our animals to be fed here at BHB. I want to give a special shout out to a YouTuber, Rainy from Caterpillar Giraffe. You can check the link out in the sidebar. She's got a really cool educational thing going on there. You don't want to miss it. Until next time, this was Snake Bites. <laughs>